I want to talk about removing sebaceous hyperplasia. These are benign skin growths, usually found on the forehead, nose, or cheeks, and typically on people with very white skin. They sort of look like little donuts under the skin. The term sebaceous applies to our sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are attached to hair follicles and also exist independently all over our skin. These glands produce sebum, otherwise known as skin oil. The term hyperplasia means an increase in the number of cells in a tissue or organ that causes an increase in the size of the part. In most cases, this overgrowth is not cancerous. So, the sebaceous hyperplasia is an overgrowth of sebaceous gland cells. There is a ton of information on the internet about these unsightly little bumps, and you can read it yourself. As you see here, these donut-shaped bumps have a small hole in the center. These are not blackheads, and you cannot squeeze them out. These lesions are lobules, tiny lobes of sebacytes, that are sebaceous glands themselves. They are not simply oil-impacted comedomes. Most information found on the internet indicates that their cause is pretty much a mystery. The home cures are a bit sketchy, ranging from apple cider vinegar to organic sea salt. Here is a photo micrograph of a sebaceous hyperplasia. I've colorized the growth to show its location. Notice the well-organized sebacyte lobes. These little donut-like growths are found directly under the epidermis. The epidermis is the skin's bloodless, protective outer layer. The sebaceous hyperplasia lies just above the dermis. The dermis contains blood vessels, nerves, and connective tissues, and is often referred to as the true skin. So these growths are located between the dermis and the epidermis. Sometimes they are located within the layers of the epidermis itself. That hole is the sebum channel of the normal sebaceous gland. The accelerated cell growth raises the tissue in the surrounding region of this opening, creating the donut-like appearance. Notice that there is some sebum in the sebaceous gland channel. Here's the layer of connective tissue that tenaciously locks to the overgrowth of the sebacytes, anchoring them firmly to the skin. Because of this strong bond, you cannot squeeze out the sebaceous hyperplasia without making a mess of it. A dermatologist could use a high-frequency device called a hyfricator or bovi to cauterize the whole thing. However, these devices usually damage too much underlying tissue and can result in a pitted scar. Generally, dermatologists won't do it. However, a highly skilled and well-trained electrologist can remove these little monsters effectively without leaving a scar. The lesion must be first correctly identified and cannot be diagnosed by an electrologist or beautician. Only a dermatologist or a physician can make the determination. As you see by these photos, a basal cell carcinoma can masquerade as a sebaceous hyperplasia. However, there is usually one outstanding visual feature. The basal cell usually contains tiny blood vessels called telangiectasia. Like most cancers, the malignant cells call forth blood vessels in a growth process called angiogenesis. But remember, you might not see these indicators, thus the importance of having a physician examine these growths before any treatment. In this video, my friend Josefa Reina is removing a sebaceous hyperplasia. Before spamming my comment section with hate and contempt, no, Josefa herself uploaded this clip into the Electrology Now database in order that we might design a lecture to better inform the public on the subject. This clip was not lifted from her channel, and certainly not without permission. So please, save your energy for another video. Here you see Josefa using electrolysis current under the sebaceous hyperplasia to loosen the connective tissues locking down the little donut. She is inserting down and through the little hole the sebaceous gland channel. She's placing the current below the sebaceous hyperplasia and above the dermis targeting the connective tissues. Using a fine needle she is able to feel the location of the connective fibers. Once the connective tissues are loosened, she lifts the whole thing out. Remember, the nodule cannot be squeezed out, 
it has to be lifted out. There are no concerns in having the epidermis broken. The epidermis grows back without difficulty. There will be bleeding due to the blood-rich nature of the upper dermis. Furthermore, this technique damages none of the important stem cells in the surrounding epidermis and damages none of the blood supply and healing components in the upper dermis. The skin grows back, leaving no scar. Remember, scar tissue does not form in the epidermis or in the top layer of the dermis. Scars form when the damage is done primarily to the reticular dermis. This lower dermis heals by laying down a thicker collagen men that we call a scar. Scar formation does not happen in the epidermis. If you are a client, you must find a highly skilled electrologist. In countries such as the UK, advanced courses are available for electrologists through their professional association. Of course, the sebaceous hyperplasia must first be examined by a qualified physician. If you are an electrologist, check with your governing authority before you attempt this procedure. There are jurisdictions that will not allow electrologists to perform any skin treatments other than hair removal. Please leave a comment and subscribe. Click on the little triangle in the lower right hand corner of your screen.